Well, hello, students. Uh, Mr. Vincent here with step five of our SketchUp project. And the great thing about step five is we're actually starting to work on the actual project itself. We're going to be starting to work on the hobby shed, which is going to go with our house. And if you see here on the screen, we're going to be working on the foundation for the hobby shed. Now, on my assumptions here, we're working on a house on a homestead in Fresno area. And so we're going to be doing a very common type of foundation for a house around here, and it's called a poured slab foundation. Um, this poured slab foundation right here, as you see, um, has concrete. This is what this part is here. And there's obviously reinforcement inside a, a vapor barrier so water doesn't come up from underneath the house and so on and so forth. Um, but what you also notice here is there are on the edges deeper poured concrete sections called footings. Now here in Fresno County, we tend to have very good soil. You would always have a soil analyst come out and um, see what sort of soil you have before you get working on the project to make sure that you have the right kind of footings and foundation. But a lot of times in Fresno, you don't need to have these deep poured footings. In fact, you can do something called a slab on grade foundation, which is what we're going to be looking at today. Sometimes you'll be working on a project, like here's the foundation up here at the top, where you've got some poor soil. And um, it's why it's super important to have the soil checked out before you start building so you know what you're dealing with. In this case up here, we've got a slab foundation up at the top up here. And then we actually have um, pieces that come down called pilings. And what they actually do is they connect using steel um, the foundation down to good soil. So this is like good rocky uh, or clay soil where it's not going to move around much. Up here we've got you know soil that is more mushy and um, that's it, not the technical term for it but that's what happens um, where the building could actually fall in if it didn't have supports down into the good bearing soil down underneath. So just important to realize that every project's different. You're gonna have you know some sort of structural engineer um, come in and figure out how to actually make your footings for your project. But in this particular case, what we're going to be doing is assuming we can do a slab on grade. Now, we had been working in SketchUp, making our name and doing a bunch of other things. But what we actually want to do now is make a new SketchUp document just for our hobby shed. And so pretty straightforward. I'm here on the main screen. I'm going to cl click Create New. Normally in class, I've told you that we always use millimeters, but in buildings in this area, we use feet and inches just because that's what materials come in. That's what's standard. Uh, the studs in the walls are 16 inches on center. Pieces of material are four foot by eight foot. And so um, it, it makes sense to use the correct um, units here. Now, just like we did before, we're going to erase temple. Goodbye, temple. It was good knowing you. Um, and then we're going to be doing what we did before. And we're making this into a 2D document. And the reason we're doing it in 2D is because um, we're, we still haven't looked at how to actually navigate very well in three dimensions. We're going to look at one of those things here. I'm going to click the clapboard and go to that top view. Um, now, if your shed is just a normal shed, like you go to Home Depot and they have sheds out in front and it's that size, what you're going to actually build is a 12 foot by 10 foot base for your shed. Um, maybe a foot bigger than that if you want the inside to be 12 foot by 10 feet, but that's kind of the magic number of what you don't need a building permit for. So a lot of times sheds, when you really think about it, um, are just buildings that are just placed after the fact and, and they just plop them down a lot of times without a building permit. And so in order for it not to need a building permit in our area, it needs to be 12 feet by 10 feet or smaller, so 120 square feet. So what I'm going to do is take the rectangle tool and I want to remind you that we just click. We do not click and drag. And so I'm going to click and then let go. And so you can see right now I, I'm not holding the mouse down and I can actually move the mouse kind of where I want. And, and down there, right down there, it says dimensions and that's how big of a space um, I'm making. And so um, I can do, you know, I, I'm thinking 11 feet in this direction and obviously it needs to be a whole lot more in the vertical direction and the question is how do i how do i get that uh exact figure well um if you watch what i'm typing down in the dimensions box this will make sense 
I'm going to type in um, 10, and then right next to enter uh, or return is an apostrophe. Okay, so I'm going to type in 10 apostrophe, and then comma 12 apostrophe. And you'll notice I don't have my hand on the mouse. If you try to move the mouse, that will go away. But if you type 10 apostrophe, 12 apostrophe, it will give us a space that is 10 foot by 12 foot. There's a nice zoom tool here down at the bottom of this toolbar that's called Zoom Extents. It's this one right here at the very bottom, Zoom Extents. Go ahead and say that out loud. When you click that, it's going to select just, um, it's gonna show you everything in your document and not very much of the outside. So Zoom Extents. We're gonna give this a little bit of thickness. And in order to do that, I am going to show you um, one of the great things about um, about your scroll wheel mouse right here. And that has to do with the actual scroll wheel. Obviously we learned before you can scroll in and out to zoom, but what you might not know is you can click, let me come back into the picture here. You can click the scroll wheel and you'll get a rotate. And now what students tend to do is they try to rotate the whole thing at once. You don't want to do that. You want to click, rotate, click, rotate, click, rotate, click, rotate, click, rotate. You can see a different view. And the only thing we're going to do to our foundation right now in this video is I'm going to go to the push pull tool. We used that back in the cell project. And when I use the push pull tool, I click once I, and I let go and I want to sort of move the mouse the direction I want the slab foundation to move and type in four quotes, four inches. Those four inches will give me that depth on my slab foundation. And this is all we need to do for the slab foundation. Just like we've done in the other videos, open up the snipping tool, make a new snip. Actually, right now, this would fail. Uh-oh, we don't want to do that. So what we're going to do is come back here, give our project a name, five foundation, click OK. It has to be named, it has to be saved, or you will have to be doing it again. And so again, you'll look up here by foundation, it will say saved. Your SNP needs to include everything from that name up in the corner, all the way down to the date and time in the lower right corner. And this is what you're turning in for step five. Thanks for watching everybody.